Hey there, and welcome back. Uh, today we're continuing from where we left off last time with a sort of, uh, mostly comprehensive beginner's guide to getting started with models. Uh, really what it takes to get them put together, get you on your feet. We covered model assembly, a lot of little tips and tricks, uh, for anybody that may not have someone else to show them that's been through it and made the mistakes, uh, kind of give some pointers on things that maybe aren't quite so, uh, aren't quite so obvious just at a glance for a new player. So you can see I've got a whole lot of stuff strewn out here. Uh, today we're covering painting. Uh, this is probably the most in-depth part of 40k available. Uh, making the models, there's a lot of room for creativity with kit bashes, stuff like that. Playing the game, there's a lot of room for strategy and... Uh, game theory, that sort of thing, but painting is really where the sky's the limit. Uh, there's so many different ways to do this, so many options and techniques, things to learn that I, I'm certain this will be one video out of thousands of hours of otherwise unique painting tutorials. Uh, so all of your models now, this it's not as important when you're you're playing with friends in the garage and everybody's having a beer. You don't need paint to to play. It it doesn't do anything aside from make the models look nice. That being said, painting your models does make them look nice. Uh, it even somebody like myself with the painting skills of maybe a strong fifth grader, weak sixth grader. Uh, just putting the bare minimum in that you can on these models to get your your two, three colors in and go from there will make them look loads better on the table. Uh, that opens the door to you for things like tournaments where you have to have at least three colors on the model and you can't do Neapolitan stripes. It has to be three actual colors on the model. Uh, it, it's probably one of the most intimidating parts of the hobby as well, just because... There is a lot of room for error, and it's a lot easier to make a model that, when you scrutinize it, doesn't look very pretty. Uh, but to, to circle back around, even the worst painted model will look fine from a distance on the tabletop. Uh, just splotchy, nasty mess, it, it's fine. On the tabletop, it looks great. They blend in with the scenery a little, kind of helps your models pop out from the terrain instead of being just a, a solid dark gray mass so let's kind of get started on that the first step you're going to want to do and i we'll, we'll go over this but the first step you're really going to want to do is to base coat the model uh i call this priming it. it you use a primer paint to do so uh games workshop has a tutorial for just painting straight onto the model, and I'm sure somebody else can make it work. Uh, the plastic surface of these models doesn't grip paint very well. It is, as you can tell just by touching it, it's very smooth. The paint doesn't have any kind of agent in it to help it stick to the model, so painting it on like that, it, it takes more time, adds more time to the final process than just using something like a primer base coat and painting over that wood because you need to do even more layers you have to go back over it uh, that first couple layers of paint just really doesn't stick it peels off uh, sits on the model like condensation wood so surface primers you have a couple different options uh, you're going to see regular liquid based ones uh, like this Vallejo. This is probably the cheapest option in the long run. Uh, this is a very popular option if you have an airbrush. That That's a whole separate, uh, separate approach to the hobby. Uh, this can be loaded into an airbrush, you thin it down a little bit, find the right PSI for how you airbrush, and spray it straight onto the model. Uh, works good. Uh, I myself haven't noticed too much of a difference between the spray can and 
airbrushed liquid primer like this, you still get that nice, super fine detail on it. Uh, this forms, you'll see it if you use a, a palette or something to store it while you're painting. It almost forms a film, and that helps it not only does it stick to the plastic model, but forming that film kind of gives it a, uh, a pudding skin effect over the, the surface of the model that gives you a canvas to paint on. Uh, like you would prepare a canvas. This this gives you something to, to paint on. This is a solid option and is probably the most cost effective to put this in an airbrush and spray it onto your model to get the best quality. Now, a step down from that is brushing it on. This primer is perfectly capable of being brushed straight onto the model. It sticks just fine. You don't get the beading like you get with just putting regular paint onto the model. And gives you a good canvas to work from from there. The problem doing that is that you tend to get more on there. You don't get that nice, even, thin coat that you get with an airbrush. It, it tends to pull on there a little, so you have to be more careful with the model, or you lose some detail. These models are very fine. Uh, they've got a lot of nooks and crannies and details that you don't want to miss out on, and the liquid can kind of gloss over those because while it's forming that skin, it will, if you have something laid out and there's a bunch of detail and then it pulls into those details and forms a layer on top of that, you're gonna lose all of those details. Now, the easiest and I have to say, in my opinion, the best base coat you can use are going to be things like the spray can base coats. These are very easy to use. You pick the can up, you shake it, you point it at the model, spray, and rotate the model around. It hits the model like an airbrush would. Uh, hits, it sticks, forms a nice super thin layer. It's very fine on the model and I think gives the most consistent base coat look to it. Uh, I've got a little example here. This little guy you see on the mini cam is with the spray can. You can see all the details stick straight out. It's almost like you've just dyed the surface of the plastic compared to this other one I hand brushed with the Vallejo. You can kind of pick up little details where it's a little splotchy or it covered up some details. You get some tiny air bubbling. Maybe here on the gun you can see right there in the front those bubbles. And a little bit of splotchiness is okay. Uh, ultimately, as long as your paint sticks, you're going to be fine. But you can see here along the, the real, real thin bits on the armor, some bubbling. Uh, that can show up once you, once you start painting. So you're, you're better off. Uh, the, the best combination for cost to quality, I think, is using an airbrush with the liquid primer. Using it out of a spray can costs the most, but gives you the most consistent, easiest base coat. Uh, I wanted to just run over real quick how to do this with a paintbrush to kind of go over it. Maybe some tips here to, to get make the most out of a, you know, whatever situation you may find yourself in. Uh, because finding these cans, especially something like Army Painter or Vallejo, if they make a, a can spray or Citadel, really kind of hinges on having a hobby store available. Uh, larger hobby stores, your hobby lobbies, that kind of thing. Not that you should buy from a hobby lobby, but larger hobby stores like that will carry spray spray primer for plastics. This can work, but it tends to be a little thicker. Uh, the kind specifically for miniatures like your, your Citadels and your Army Painter is uh, a lot finer textured. It goes over in a much thinner coat. Uh, things like, uh, struggling to think of a brand, your off-the-shelf, uh, Krylon spray primer for plastic will go on a lot thicker because it's designed for larger pieces, uh, and if that's something you want to work with, you know, kind of experiment, maybe check out a couple brands at your, whatever hobby store you have available, uh, but let's let's go over what we've got here for 
this guy here, our surface primer. So we're going to put this away. We're not using these yet. That'll be here in a minute. Uh, for today's example, we're going to go over contrast paints. Uh, sort of a unique thing that uh, Citadel has put out. I'm not aware of anything similar to this that any of the other paint lines have done. Not that they don't have great paints, just that this is sort of a, a unique niche that Citadel fills. Uh, it's sort of a an in-between of a paint and an ink. It's very thin. Uh, according to Citadel, you don't need to thin this down to paint your model with it. You just dab it straight out of the pot and put it on the model in one thick coat. And then because it is very thin, very uh, low viscosity, it channels down the model, fills in all the little cracks and crevices, and peel, like gets real thin on the peaks, fills in real deep in the, the troughs, and shades the model for you, in a sense. You can do one coat, and the model looks like you went through and did highlights on the raised bits and shadows on the deep bits. And it, it works out okay. Uh, from my experience, it's a very good paint to use for things with small, detailed faces. Uh, things like the body of these gaunts are a good example. It will go on there. Things that have large, smooth surfaces, uh, like to an extent the, the back armor plates on the gaunts, or larger models. Uh, I did the wings of a hive tyrant that one coat didn't do it. It was very splotchy. I had to go back over it with two coats and e even a third coat wouldn't be remiss. Uh, so enough about our paints. We're just using Citadel or Vallejo surface primer. This is gray. I think they have a lot of different varieties available. Uh, gray primer is a really good neutral primer. Black primer is really good as a base coat for models that you want to just have a darker tone. Uh, I've read that a lot of painters that are better than me will only ever use one color just so that they're always working from the same starting point. Uh, no wrong answers here. You know, you could even use a white primer if you wanted a brighter model. Just find something that works for you and go with it because the more practice you get in, the more confident you're going to feel, the, the happier you're going to be with your models. So, we have a little palette here. Uh, you can get these anywhere. These are just little plastic palettes for storing paint. Uh, we're going to go over something a little different here with this Tupperware in a minute that I think is a, a better alternative to these. And it's, it's about, about the same cost effectiveness. Uh, we have just our regular brush here. I would advise, uh, because of the nature of this primer, and how easy it is to mess the brush up with it. Maybe pick a brush that's got a larger head because you're just really looking to get one coat over the model as quick as you can before it dries. And pick one that you're not planning on using to paint with too much because it, this is probably my, the fastest I've ruined a paintbrush. It's the one I use for things like surface primer. And you really don't want to have to go through something like a deep clean on a brush every time you go through and prime stuff unless you're doing really big batches. Uh, I've got a little ves vessel here. Uh, this is just tap water. We use this to thin our paints. Uh, we'll get to that later in the painting. I personally don't thin the primer. Uh, I've been told that it messes with the surface bonding that this has with the plastic and can lead to beading, stuff like that. I have a larger vessel of water over here. This is going to be anytime I finish uh, one painting task, uh, say I get contrast paint on my brush, I paint over the model, the model's done, set it down. Once I get all of those painted and I'm done with that brush for the time being, I'm going to swish it around in this water to get the excess paint off of the bristles, pull it out, and dry it off a little and set it to the side until I'm finished painting and then I can move on to brush soap and deeper cleaning, reshape the bristles to dry, things like that, just so that I don't have an entire glob of paint on the end of my brush hardening while I'm painting, going through the other tasks. Uh, always want to have 
shop towels, paper towels, a rag, something to keep things clean. Uh, a good painting surface is always nice because it's paint. You, it'll drip somewhere. So surface primer. We're only going to be doing this one model here. Uh, you can do these in larger batches. Be careful when you use something like a regular palette. Uh, we're not going to use the wet palette for the surface primer for the same reason. The additional water doesn't isn't something I want to risk on the model right now. It will dry out as you leave it in here, especially as you get closer to the bottom. It'll start drying out and get even thicker and lead to even globbier painting on here. Uh, once you get a little further in, just uh, grab a tiny bit of water, add it in, reconstitute it. Uh, that works even better if you have something like an acrylic medium that's designed for this. Just put a drop of acrylic medium in to, to bring it back up to the original viscosity. And maybe with a medium you could even do that uh, up front. So we've got this guy here. You want to make sure it's clean, free of dust. So if these have been sitting on a shelf somewhere for a long time, give them a good dusting because like anything else, the paint will stick to the dust and then fall off. So he's ready to go. These two guys over here I've done just so that I have a couple dry models available to show for um, the painting process. So we've got this guy here, and I'm not going to pour out a bunch of primer in here just for one model. I'm just going to shake this up. The lid has a nice convenient little bit in the center here where I can dab in, get some primer and just go over this guy just nice broad strokes uh, you don't want to speed run this you don't want to dunk the model in it but the faster you finish the more consistent this will turn out and it gives you a chance to go back through you can see as I'm painting it I've covered up the little uh, little tail holes back here little breathy tubes So we just go over it, we may need a little more. That's a bad idea waiting to happen. On here, give it another shake, pop it off. Like I said, we're we're only painting one model. There's no no need to get too ridiculous with it. Something I've had limited success with here. And again, you, you really got to find what works for you. Is to, while it's still wet, just take your model. Give it a little blowing on. Try and clear the bubbles off of it. Open back up these little, uh, little holes and stuff. And sort of force the, the primer out of the recesses of the model. Go back over it with your brush. Try to pick up little bits of the excess without painting too much more on. And then we're just gonna let that dry for a minute. Get a little more primer. And when I'm hand brushing the primer on, I like to do two coats. Uh, you can kind of see Here's the Citadel painted guy. Here's our guy with one coat on. You can see it's pooled in a couple spots. It's a little less uh, little less consistent than our boy over here. So we'll go in, we'll do a couple coats there just to uh,
just to make sure it's nice and consistent. Uh, it's the same technique we'll be using with everything but the contrast paint to give a nice smoother surface to it. Uh, hopefully without sacrificing too much in the way of surface detail. So we'll get another dab. Let's go back over to the side we started with. Just go over one more time. You don't need a ton of it. Swing over to the other side. Give it that second coat just for a nice even base. The splotchiness we're not so concerned about because the paint will cover that up. It's a good time to catch anything you missed like I tend to do. And then just set him to the side. This would be the time you move on to your next model. Uh, something like that. So we're going to set that to the side. We're going to move this out of the way. This guy is drying. While he's doing that, we're going to clean off our brush with primer. You can see even just, uh, just a quick rinse there helps a ton. Do try and avoid getting anything past probably about right here on the on your paintbrush anything that gets up here and into the word escapes me uh the metal banding that holds the bristles together here can get inside of there and dry it's very difficult to remove without something strong enough that you could hurt the bristles and it uh forces the bristles out it dries, warps into shapes, moves a little, so all the bristles that want to sit like this suddenly have something in between them that's pointing them out in different directions. You're much worse off. So we'll rinse that off, kind of dab that dry a little, set it to the side. We're gonna grab another brush here. one for the brown paint and we'll take one to put the contrast on so while he's drying I'm gonna start with one of our other guys here this guy's dry I painted him earlier so that I didn't have to uh, force you to sit here with me in an awkward three minute silence while this model dries shake your paints up uh, you may feel with uh, some of your paints, as you pick them up, you don't feel it sloshing around in there. Shake it a little more until it opens up. Uh, Army Painter will sell you BBs that don't. I can't, couldn't tell you if normal BBs would do the trick or not, but Army Painter sells a, a bundle of like 100 small BBs you can put in there that give you something to help agitate the pigment back into the medium and get it all broken up. You don't really need that with contrast paints because they're so thin that they don't, uh, I've yet to have one settle. So give it a quick shake. Now, again, according to Games Workshop, you don't need to cut this with water, do thin coats, add medium to it, anything like that for the effect to work. And I've found limited success with that so far. Uh, I'm no golden demon painter, but it works for me. I'm happy with it pop it open. We have a little on the lid here. We'll just soak some of that up with our paintbrush. Grab our guy and then just hit everything with it. I'm not so concerned about getting the back done uh, or pretty because that's going to be a different color. But the whole torso we want to go through Get all the little bits and bobs. Get his little head. Do a coat on the gun. I am going to paint the gun a different color, but I do like to have uh, kind of one color 
as a, a solid foundation that isn't the primer. Just in case I decide while I'm painting, once I get there, that I don't want the entire gun to be a solid color, I have another color underneath that I can leverage. We'll grab a little more, dab it on the lid. Really get in there, maybe do a second coat on your uh, very smooth pieces like that tail. It's long enough that there's not really any room for the paint to settle into any recesses and do its little trick so it just sort of goes on how you paint it and then dries which uh, tends to be pretty splotchy when I do it Get that done we're gonna uh, wiggle our way in here get the inside of the model try to rotate it in the light a little bit just to make sure you're getting everything because there's always some angle you can find to look at it in a different light get it on there paint the back side of this there I personally do uh, bases way after the fact they're the last step in making the model for me so I don't worry too bad about getting primer on it getting uh, daubs of paint on there because I'm just going to paint over it and then apply a new new base texture or paint flock that sort of thing after the fact so that guy is pretty good. We'll set him down to dry. Let's get our other guy going here. We'll put him here so you can watch him dry. Kind of see how the uh, the paint fills the recesses. And we're gonna do this guy. We're just gonna do it the way Citadel says. You get a big glob of it, go right over the model. I do try to use a little more uh, discretion, but we'll, we'll do one the way Citadel says to do it, just to see how we turn out. Get a big old glob on there, just brush it on, wiggle it around, get it into those cracks. Again, just uh, once everything looks good from your angle, switch your angle around a little. See what else you can find. Little bits that get rubbed off, you didn't see, couldn't reach, the paint didn't run to because of gravity. go our second guy done drying up our first guy you can see here the paints uh, starting to dry up a little on him third guy we're gonna take a look at just kind of give a good look you really want to avoid painting over a model that has any I think we still have some here it has any kind of wet primer on it because 
the paint and the primer will just mix together and then your model will be mostly painted but also have a splotch that has weird gray marbling and bubbles in it that looks kind of bad in that spot. So we'll, we'll just set this guy to the side for now. Wait for him to dry a little more. Check out our guy over here, see how he's doing. Not too bad. You can see like on the gun here, on his body, the little recesses are much darker because the paint has pooled and the surfaces are lighter. You know, the tail, tail is smooth enough. Nothing too much to complain about there in terms of paint coverage. So while we're waiting for this to dry, we're going to seal up our paint pot. We can always pop it back open later. Make sure that's shut. As we mentioned, we're going to swish our brush around in our tub of water so that it doesn't dry. We can always swish this off. You don't ever want to leave it sitting in water because it sits in there and the base will smush up against the bristles and warp them. Uh, but a good, good rinse I found really helps. Rinse it off. You can see, I'll show you on the tiny cam here. Our brush is almost clean. Still some bits in there. Another rinse, maybe uh, dab it against the bottom there, give it a little agitation. And we look pretty good from here. Could still use a good scrub in the sink, but we'll go ahead and dry that off. Try and get what we can off the base. Set that down until we're ready to pick it up again and paint the rest of our guys. Finish the priming on this dude. So let's go over what I have here. This is a super simple wet palette you can make at home with things people tend to have lying around. Uh, the parts are very inexpensive. This is just a Tupperware container with a lid inside. There is a paper towel with water on it. The lid is to keep it airtight so that it doesn't dry out mildew. It's been in here for like three weeks. Nice neutral smell. So you want a nice damp paper towel in there. Uh, I can't give you like a perfect amount of water to use, but eh, there, there's some wiggle room. This is parchment paper. Uh, I've had read a few things that some people will use wax paper to do the same thing. Uh, my only issue with wax paper is that one side is coated with wax and therefore it is less moisture uh, permeable, which is really what this paper is here for in the first place. Uh, you take this, lay it on the wet paper towel, kind of smush it in there so that the back side gets wet. Maybe add a little bit of your own water here on the surface. You'll tell it kind of binds to the surface of the wet paper towel. You can see, uh, there we go. Let's form a nice bit on top. Slide your excess water out of the way here. Maybe, maybe don't use your fingers to do this. Not get finger oil in there. Now this makes a perfect surface. Once this is done to place your paints on. Uh, some of the best advice anyone ever came up with for painting miniatures is to use two thin coats. Uh, you take your paint, get a little of, it, little of it out onto something, mix in just a little bit of water to thin it, and then put two coats of paint on your model. The wet palette aids in this, uh, aids in the painting process because a little bit of moisture is seeping in through the bottom through your parchment paper. And this seeps up into the bottom of the paint that you have sitting on it that is evaporating water out of itself into the air. So instead of the paint drying out and getting uh, more and more viscous, paint stays at the same nice thin viscosity and lets you paint multiple models in a row. Now, this is a little overkill for painting one model because 
one model, you're going to use so little paint that it's not going to have time to dry out. But mul multiple in a row, this is very useful for keeping your paint from drying out. So we've got that guy. We're painting three models. Uh, this is something I probably would just use uh, use the palette, something else, so that I don't have to go through all the trouble here. Uh, but we're going to use this just to, to give an example of it, kind of show how it does. We don't need the lid for now. We'll set that to the side. Now we don't want to pull this out until we are dry on our models here, and you can kind of tell this is a lot easier to do in real life when you look at it. Uh, yeah, the undercarriage there is still very wet. We don't want to... Oh, you can see a little dab there on the top that I missed, but that's okay. You don't have to worry about partial credit because there's really not any credit. Painted is painted. So we will pause the video for a minute and wait for these to dry. Okay, with some quick movie magic, our last guy that we primed is ready. Uh, our other two dudes have been moved in front of a fan to uh, help them dry a little quicker, get everything ready. We're just gonna get a little more contrast paint. Go over this guy real quick like we did with the others. Get him ready so he can start the drying process. Be careful not to uh, <coughs> to brush too hard here. Uh, hitting like that tends to fire off tiny flecks of paint, which have a bad habit of landing all over you and all the stuff you didn't want paint on and the floor. Just try to take, you know, feel free to make fast motions, but just make sure they're delicate. One of those uh, do as I say, not as I do kind of things. Because it's very easy. Oops as you get started to sort of start firing off and get so focused on getting the model coated that you accidentally start firing paint bits everywhere. There we go. One more guy. Nice and painty. Ready to try. We'll rinse our brush out again. Set that off to the side.
Make sure our wet palette's still okay. Looking good. We got a couple beads of moisture on the surface. Pretty much what we wanted. Get our paint shaken up. And we will have another time skip here and see if our guys are done drying. All right, our first two guys are most of the way there. Uh, we're gonna take the opportunity. Now that it's dried, we can kind of go over it again from a couple angles. We'll do our little touch-ups. Uh, and then hopefully once those are done, this guy will be dry. But you can kind of see uh, on the chin there, I've got a white spot, maybe the base of the gun. They're on the tail. Oh no, that's this other guy. So just a couple spots there. We're gonna go back through. We don't need too much paint. Just wanna make sure we're covered. We'll set that back down. A little bit on the tail, a little bit on his chin. Yeah. Now we're cooking with biomass. Just one more quick once over. Okay, so we're good there. We'll put this down. Yet another rinse. Shape the brush to dry. Got our Citadel layer brush here. Uh, you know, you'll get a comfortable feel for what size brush to use for what thing. Uh, obviously, you don't want something giant like this for painting tiny details onto a model. Uh, something like a layer coat on a larger model, that's fine. You don't want to do with such a tiny brush because it just takes too long. So we've only got a few guys here. We're only going to do little bits of brown on them. Uh, let that dry, kind of. Uh, may, maybe pick one more layer to do. Uh, you really do the can do the layers in any order you want. You can do finish one model. You can paint all of one color across your range of models. It's uh, mostly up to you. Oh, that's right. We can't be done with that because our guy on the camera is not done. So let's get a little of our Baylor Brown. And I'll just take a little dab out of the lid. Put it onto our wet palette. And we can always come back for more. It's a much bigger pain to pick up the little parchment paper and toothpaste squeeze all the paint back in. And then you can use a little corner of a piece of paper towel. You can dip the end of your brush in to get some water on there. Just give one little dab in there. And that may even be too much water for what I'm after here, that whole drop. But that's okay. We just want to reduce the viscosity of our paint to a, a thinner level. You know, you'll get a comfortable feel for what that should be as you go along. We'll dab the excess off our brush, pick up our model, and then just kind of start. So I want the back armor plates on these guys. to be this brown. So I'll start painting on that brown. And if you don't give these enough time to dry, uh, you run into the same issue that you do with the primer, where the paints will blend and cause a big headache. They blend, they give a different color. Now that is an advanced painting technique you can do to give sort of a gradient look to things. Uh, I think non-metallic metals use that. I'm not a good enough painter to give you a tutorial on how to do that sort of thing. 
So for now, we want to make sure that everything is completely dry before we start painting over it. Get a little more, dab it off. And I'll show you here why it's super good to use your two thin coats. And then we're going to do his little head plate. And there's really no, uh, no quick and dirty tips for how to get better at doing this. You really just have to do it. Practice, practice, practice. You know how it is. So let me show you here. As I'm doing it, this first layer is already almost dry. On the back, let's see if we can get this where you can tell. You can kind of, sort of see. It's really splotchy there. You see a lot of the purple sticking through still. The paint's uneven. We're going to let that dry. Come back. And we'll give it a second go over. And that second layer really fills in the gaps. Gives it a much more solid look. And is... Honestly, it's one of the fastest, easiest steps you can take to improve the the overall appearance of your models near instantly. In terms of painting tips, that tends to be number one for a reason. And don't be afraid of making mistakes. You can always, uh, I say always. There, there is a hard limit eventually, but you can always just go back over it with the un other colors, fix any, like if you accidentally sp splash over, you know, just go back over it again with contrast paint later. Uh, maybe a couple layers, hide it out. Because again, tiny, tiny details like that that really stick out when you scrutinize the model are important for painting contests or posting them on Instagram. But on the tabletop, from a distance, in a blob of 30, nobody's going to pick out that you splashed a little brown over onto one of the arms of your termagant. So we'll get there. We're going to do his little head. Don't be afraid to use the side of your brush for things that have a very, uh, very narrow elevations. Tiny decals, filigrees. Just little raised bits. You can kind of use the side of your brush to hit. Makes it a little easier than trying to freehand. So we got his little head plate. We gotta decide if we want any more of the armor on these guys. Yeah, they got some little leg plates. Let's do the leg plates. I got a couple little splashes off the side there. That's okay. I'm not going to let that get me down. Kind of squeeze in there. Use the tip of the brush to get the sides.
So we'll let him dry, we'll do the thighs on this little dude, and then we'll check on our third guy and see if he's ready for his first coat. Super boring to listen to, I'm sure, but this isn't something that I can do a good job of talking my way through. So we're good there. We'll check our third guy. See how he's doing. Still a little moist, so we're going to let him sit. I'll show you that guy. You can kind of see the splotchiness of him there. And we'll get started on that second layer and really, really show you what kind of kind of importance that brings to a model. Oop. Got a little bit on his arm there. We'll get his little head again. We may have to get one more dab of paint here. I may have spread it a little too thin. Oops. Got a little on the side of his head. Again, I'm not too torn up about it. I'm no great painter. These aren't going into a contest or anything. I'm sure some of our purists will uh, will tell you that it's important to treat every model like it's going into a contest, but you know, really, at the end of the day, as long as you're happy with it, that's what matters. We got that thigh done. Let's get this other old ham bone painted in. There we go. So you can see this guy, the splotchiness, and then let's immediately rotate into this dude. You can see that back bit. Much more solid color. Nothing shining through. And in person, it helps stick out a lot too. You really cover up a lot of your splotchiness, any kind of gaps, by using a second coat gives you a much, much smoother paint. It's absolutely worth taking the time to do a second coat.
love those tiny little tails. They're like a built-in painting handle. we go same thing with this little guy much smoother looks a little nicer and is one of those things that you can kind of see even at a distance we still need some more drying time on this guy so he may have to wait until a couple hours from now to finish get that little bit of just this paint off of his foot so let's set him off to the side. So there we go. We got our nice first layer on these guys. Good start. Uh, we're going to want to do stuff like eyes, uh, paint the gun. So I think for just one of them, we can handle that. For this video. So let's rinse out our layer brush. that to a point again so we'll do something quick and easy like the eyes Open up our choice of yellow for the eyes without spilling it everywhere. Oh man, that is like a mustard yellow. A great color to contrast against our purple and sort of uh, harmonize with the brown to make our eyes. Now, something like this, uh, I'm going to use so little of it that I wouldn't even advise using a paintbrush to put the dab of water in. I would just find somewhere that has a bead of condensation in your wet palette and use that. Very thick, heavy paint. We just need a little dab. Even that may be overkill. We'll set that to the side and we'll find out. We take that, mix it with our little bead of water. And we're just going to see by giving these little dudes some eyes. So forgive me if this is difficult to watch. Hard part of these tiny paint brushes is this paint will dry before you... Before you even get the chance to... To paint it on. So, not particularly great, 
but it works and we can always go over it a little bit of shading later since we don't want to have to draw pupils into this just a little bit of shading later will help give uh, give enough of the picture that your brain will fill it in from a distance you can see that yellow really kind of pops sits in there you can tell where he's looking and that we can do a second coat of just to get it real consistent in there And there we go. So, yeah, we ended up using too much, but that's okay. Uh, still a tiny bit of paint in the end. We'll wash that off. Just make sure we don't have any stuck on there. Let's get our layer brush out again. We'll do some green for the gun. I didn't uh, didn't go over it, but I used a very very fine tip uh, brush to do the yellow there. At a point, it's even finer. Very useful for tiny details. We're going to get our Citadel layer brush out again because I don't think we're in too much danger of the paint running through. And we're going to try the guns out. We're going to go with a green, see where that leads us. Don't be afraid if your, uh, your piece of parchment gets too full to, uh, to rip off a new piece, start over. Go with this green. And we'll just see what this does for our gun here. We're just gonna put it over the, over the front and then maybe we'll highlight the inside of the, I don't know what you'd call those, barrels maybe. Oh, we missed an opportunity for some brown on the tip of the gun here. That'd be a good spot to go back. Do that. Over that. Then maybe get the little grooves in the bottom. Get the first layer done on that. Let's 
So, not a particularly, uh, particularly brave color scheme, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that. We can take that, wait for this one to dry, do a second layer, and then we'll figure out what we want to put inside the grooves. Or if we want to just let the shading do that. So we'll take him, do a second layer. that painted over that's a little harder to see in our tiny cam but it's a little green on the tip and we can always uh, add some accents to the inside of the gun barrel there uh, we'll rinse this out something else I would consider doing is uh, for our little, uh, little hooves there. Maybe do some black. We could do some green along the exposed lines on his arm. Let's, let's try that out here while we still have, still have fresh paint. We'll give it a shot. We we'll need a very narrow tip on the brush. And we're just gonna Hit this little exposed bit. That didn't turn out too well. That's okay though. We'll come over back to his arm. Let's just see if we can. Paint on some details here. Paint that in. Oh, we have a visitor. Yes, I'm sorry, I can't pet you right now. So we'll do the one X there. Green and purple are nice complementary colors. Kind of hard to see in the lighting we have available here. Let's see if we can fix that. Mm. Yeah, not a not a whole lot of. whole lot we can do there to help that out, but that's okay. Do the same thing on this guy. You know, add a couple details, bring, bring everything to life a little. At the end of the day, they're your dudes.
There we go. Have another one. Maybe if I give you the phone flashlight. Kind of nice to have. Run up the arm. We'll take him. We'll do the second coat. Always worth a second coat. The smoothness on it just really helps the detail pop. his little buddy there. We'll go ahead and rinse our brush off because I think we still need just a little, yeah, just a little more drying time on our first guy before we even apply the brown. So we'll rinse that off. Make sure it's nice and clean. What the heck? Let's, uh, let's finish it up here. Got a little dab there. that in get the brown back on the brush and let's do this tiny little hat on the gun Not too much, just takes a little dab of the paint. Wait for him to dry. Because the second layer doesn't really work if the first one's not dry. Oh, we don't have anything on the tiny cam. Nice idea. Further, uh, further investments. You can get away with a lot with just using hot water on your brushes. Uh, you'll eventually want to pick up some brush soap and maybe something to uh, to let you clean up old brushes. Uh, you rest it inside that cleaner and it breaks down all the paint on the bristles and everything like that helps kind of breathe some life back into it so we'll get our second coat on the gun hat And there we go. One little guy ready for action. We 
we've got our three colors. Uh, we're missing any kind of shading. Uh, we could do something like that. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and put that in here. We got a little bit of time left. So, shading is something that I have very little uh, practical knowledge of. You use something like this, or you make your own wash at home. It's like a, a watered down ink almost. It has very low viscosity, and like the contrast paints, it tries to run into the grooves and fill those in while peeling away from the peaks. You don't wanna just dunk your models in the stuff because it looks bad. However, washing your models with it gives them a nice natural shading look that's otherwise really hard to achieve. And that also works even better if you do things like edge highlight on your models. Uh, I don't actually have a brown two edge highlight with, but we'll go over that in another video sometime. So this stuff is very runny. You don't need your palette for it. Uh, in fact, I think we're done with this for the day. So we'll take our little sheet out. If I have a lot of paint left over, you can try and reclaim it from here, kind of toothpaste squeeze it. Some tiny bit like this, it's not worth trying to reclaim because it's, it's mostly gone at this point. We'll dispose of that. You can just pop the lid right back onto your wet palette. There's nothing in there to spoil. So it'll just sit. Maybe don't leave it for too long so it doesn't grow milty. But so we take one of our guys. You want them to be dry. So let's make sure the gun hat's good. And we don't want to put this over the contrast paint because the contrast paint is already trying to give that shading look when you look at it. Uh, highs, lows, that sort of things. But the brown is not. The brown is just a nice neat tone. So I get a little on the brush. I dab it off in the top of the pot there on the little lip and just have a little bit in there and then we'll just go over the parts that we're looking to shade. The brush runs dry, kind of dab up from where you were because you don't want too much of this stuff. Uh, don't want it too on there. Just want a little bit. This gives that nice shading. Kind of an oily look. You can find these in a bunch of different colors. Uh, a lot of better painters than me have actually used it. Uh, you use it as a layer on top of the paint before you place another paint. Helps really just... Uh, bring the paint job to life. So here's our original dude. Let's see if you can get a good comparison there. It's way out of focus. There's the original guy. You can see this guy over here is a little darker. Got some shading recessing into the grooves of his back. And when he dries, he'll look a little better for it. Let's go ahead and try that while we're here. We'll dab a little on the gun. Kind of let it dip into the, the recesses. Shake up the extra. Use the side of our brush to kind of sweep up all of it that's not inside these little grooves. You could even do a little on the side of him. Where the green runs down into the gun. So let's go ahead and try and show you him there versus him there. You can see a little of the, the difference, but once that's dry, can make things a lot better. 
you know, again, it's, it's whatever makes you happy with your models. Be wary as you're painting this that it is extremely thin, uh, almost oily. So as you paint it, it is going to just run away from you. We'll try a little over, over the eyes in a minute as well. Take that on. Dab that on, get our excess. Try a little on the arms. While well, first guy's drying, let's just go ahead and do a tiny bit on the eyes. That tiny bit of shade in the eyes, especially on Games Workshop models with how the eyes are modeled in can be enough to give you the facsimile of a better eye. You can almost kind of tell there. He actually looks like he's got an eye in there that's yellow. Facing forward. This helps make things a little, little better at a distance. And there we go. This first guy's drying up nicely. You can see his back looks a lot, uh, a lot more shaded, a little more, uh, almost natural, if you will, like he's in actual natural light. And it helps give the gun a little bit more uh, pizzazz, where there's uh, there's some shadows inside the tiny barrels and stuff there. Super nice to have, not a big deal if you don't. Uh, definitely something I would advise investing in just because shading paints really are one of the number two things you can do to just really, really propel your models forward a little. It's one of those steps like the thinning paints where you do it and you sit back and look at your model and go, wow, it, I feel like I'm actually doing this. So, uh, water that out. Now, you've noticed I've kept these separate uh, just so that I have pure water to add to my paint so that I'm not tainting it with this dingy used paint. Uh, this is a good point to use this water. Bring our paper towel forward. Now, a good way to do this, take your brushes, run hot water in the sink, go through, gently massage it, try and make sure there's no paint in it, and get it cleaned out as best you can. Uh, investing in brush soap is also a nice idea. Just uh, get a little water on your brush. You know, it'll, it'll have instructions right there on your thing. Rinse brush in warm water, swirl brush in compound, and work in a lather. Rinse and repeat as necessary until brush is clean. So, we get a little water. Get a little brush soap. Kind of work it in there. And we'll just kind of swirl that around, you know, like the instructions say. You 
want a little more water on there than I used. This lather here is what we're after. So we get that. Swirl it around here. Rinse it off. Get a little more of the lather. Shape it, and we're good to go. We got a nice fine, fine-ish point on our brush. Let's try it with the little guy. A little water on him. Use some of that lather we've already worked up. Nice and clean. Another little dab. Fine like a needle. Just kind of go through. Get that done with all of them. Don't be afraid if the lather's got a little bit of pigment to it. You know, it's it's soap. It'll clean. This one may need a little more TLC in the sink. Just because I've gotten some primer up against the, uh, the tip there. So I'll work that in a minute. And this Citadel brush should be okay. Try not to pick up the cat hair. There we go, a little more water. Mix it off, pick some of that up. And form it into a point. There we go. Those are good to go back into the rack for drying. We'll work this guy in the sink. But we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, as always, thanks for joining me. Hope you had a good time watching. Hopefully uh, taught you a thing or two you didn't already know. And if you did, you know, if you think you've got a, you know, of a better way to do something, feel free to leave it in the comments, you know. Uh, don't, don't be afraid to say something because you could help somebody else out, which is really what we're after here. So thanks again.